Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden and today we are going over the 20 best rear wheel drive sports cars for less than $5,000. We recently did 20 of them for under $10,000 and now we're going to do 20 more for under $5,000. And yes, these are all going to be 20 different cars in the last list. Uh, the way these videos work is kind of confusing, so I'll put a picture up right now. There's so much like dust flying around my face right now. It's making me mad. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, don't forget, if you want to buy some merch to support the channel, it is www.smoothstance.com slash shop. And with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Number 20 is the Datsun 280Z, and it pains me to put this car this low on the list, but it is for good reason. The car came with a 2.8 liter inline six, which is weird, making 168 horsepower, and they're actually just beautiful, beautiful cars, but the only downside to these cars is their age. Everyone thinks that they have something special, so they don't wanna sell this car, but when they do go on the market, you can find one for just under $5,000, usually $4,500, but since the car is so old and timeless, you're gonna have to fix it because all the good ones, all the ones that everybody you know is gonna scoop up in their hands are going to be well over $10,000. So yes, you can find a 280Z for under $5,000, but it's going to be a rundown, beaten up. It's gonna look like freaking Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor's kind of been doing bad lately. Number 19 is the Toyota MR2 AW11 or first generation, and that comes with a 1.6 liter inline four that makes 143 horsepower, and this puppy was mid-engined, just like every single MR2 out there. That's the reason why they're called MR2, mid-engined rear-wheel drive two-seater. Uh, just thought you should know. Some other people say it's a different thing, but that's what I think. I think it makes more sense that way. And they have the worst snap oversteer known to man. So obviously, if you don't have good driving experience, then maybe you probably, possibly don't want to pick one of these up unless you're just like a huge fan of trees. But if you can handle it, then they are a great experience. I said it in the last video, and I'll say it again. The Toyota MR2 is a car that you have to you have to know how to drive before you own it, which is weird because usually you learn after you drive it. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, they also look like one of the coolest little retro 80s sports cars ever built. Number 18 is the Volvo 240, and it comes with a 2.3 liter inline four that makes 114 horsepower. And yes, that is hilariously slow, but these cars are actually a really, and I mean really good beginner platform. One, they're the most basic engineering out there, so it's super easy to work on. Two, it has low horsepower, but can still get sideways if you want it to, and it can still be a load of fun. And three is they have a decent sized aftermarket community for them. They don't have the biggest out there in the world, obviously, because there's not a lot of Volvo 240 enthusiasts, but they do have enough parts to have a good time and never get bored of your car. I think they're an amazing car to experiment on. Plus they have that old boxy like car look that all the freaking Russian street drifters seem to enjoy. They love boxy cars. You, you guys are killing it over in Russia. Keep it up. Speaking of boxy boys, number 17 is a Mercedes W124, and it comes with a bunch of different engine options for whichever one that you decide to purchase, but they all make around 100 to 150 horsepower, which is once again, not the highest number on this list, but this car is just so baller. Like it's just, it's a car that like, I can see LeBron James drive into the finals. Not really, but like maybe back in like 2012, you would have driven it there. I don't know. Like you're driving around a mafia car pretty much. They also have that Mercedes like comfort experience that you don't get with most of the other cars on this list. So is this car the most fun? Not at all. Is it the comfiest? Absolutely. You're pulling up to events in style if you pick yourself up a W124. Number 16 is the Mazda RX-7 FB that stands for full buttocks and it comes with a 1.1 liter two rotor rotary engine that makes a astonishingly large 100 horsepower but the car was very lightweight and yes that doesn't really make up for only having 100 horsepower but to be honest with you you don't buy an FB RX-7 for the speed you buy it for the coolness of it the retro factor the cool styling I mean the car has a rotary it looks amazing and it can get sideways actually pretty decently they're cool when they drift let me tell you it looks sick when you see these fb rx7 swinging it around i highly recommend that you stay away from them if they're going to be your first car though since they do tend to have those rotary problems and you're just you're not going to want to deal with even more problems in high school because you already got enough on your plate 
Number 15 is the BMW Z3, and it comes with a 3-liter inline 6 that makes 225 horsepower, and they were not only available in a convertible, which everybody knows. Everybody knows these cars are available in the convertible, but surprisingly, they were also available in a coupe, and the coupe is the one that people are like, it looks like a clown shoe. And yes, I know they look like a clown shoe, but to be honest, I kind of like the looks of them, all right? I said it. Shoot me. And drifters worldwide are starting to like the looks of them too, and they see the potential that these cars have. Have. so get your hands on one now before like everybody wants them because drifters have the biggest influence on what's popular in the car community out there they buy one car and now everybody wants it it's just mind-blowing they're also extremely lightweight cars which makes for some good like spirited driving on the canyons but let's be honest you watch this video because you like rear wheel drive since they can drift and yes the z3 can drift very well Number 14 is the Mazda RX-8, and it comes with a 1.3 liter two-rotor rotary engine that makes 232 horsepower. And yes, that number is actually pretty damn decent for this list, but the car also weighed a pretty decent amount. It was a little chubby puppy, you know what I'm saying? It was like Miss Puff. And since you have to like swap the engine every 100,000 miles pretty much because Mazda just like didn't realize that they have some problems with the rotary engines, I think that it isn't really worth that much higher on the list. Yes, the car is pretty quick. It's a pretty quick car for under $5,000. Also, it looks really cool and it's very, very unique. Not a lot of people modify RX-8s and when they do, they're usually used them in like weird ways and they don't do it like the most basic way, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you have so much potential with one of these cars. However, if you do know how to work on rotaries, then this is a great choice. But if you don't, then I highly recommend staying away from it. Number 13 is the BMW 325i E30, and it comes with a 2.5 liter inline six that makes 189 horsepower. And these are just like the coolest cars out there, man. All right, I, man, like they just make me so happy. Unfortunately, they're kind of getting like that TikTok hype, which to be honest, they kind of deserve. Like I understand why the E30 is getting so overpriced now, but that means that they're going to be a little bit too expensive for my personal taste in just a couple years. Either way, they look really cool and can do just about anything that you put them to since they are a BMW. Just like expect to be called basic if you get one since like the kids on TikTok with no car are going to judge you for it. I think it's so stupid too. Don't don't you don't have to comment and say that I'm that's stupid. I agree. But yeah, it's a sick car and you're going to have a blast driving it and everybody loves the E30. Number 12 is the Fox Body Ford Mustang and it comes with a 5 liter V8 that makes a pretty laughably small 225 horsepower but keep in mind this is back in the oil crisis and cars were just starting to be fun again plus it was the 90s and technology wasn't so advanced back then either so even if it wasn't an oil crisis i i honestly can't see this car pushing more than 300 horsepower but these cars, as we all know, are like the street racing monsters. So obviously you're not capped out at that 225 horsepower. You can get plenty more. You go to any drag racing event in the world and there's going to be at least two Fox bodies there. And for some reason, it just seems like literally nobody can beat them. So if you're into going fast in a straight line, then here you go. There are, are videos of them racing with like 1200 horsepower GTRs and still smoking them. That's crazy. A GTR, it's all wheel drive, it's turboed. It doesn't even make any sense. I'm so confused. How are they so fast? Number 11 is the Mazda Miata NA or the NB, and they both came with a 1.8 liter inline four that makes 135 horsepower, but way less than a freaking McDonald's chicken nugget. This is yet another car that gets a lot of hate on TikTok right now for being overpopular. Oh, they're overrated, which is such a stupid thing, by the way, but that's just, that's not this video. So I'm not going to get into it. I can get, I can talk a lot about that. But if realistically, if you slap a $500 turbo on it and get this car tuned, this car will be scary fast. Like, like, like scary fast. Just ask my good friend, Zach. Here's his Instagram. Ask him how scary his car is. Keep in mind, though, the NB and the NA Miatas are both pretty much the exact same car. So if you want the 1.8 in the NA, but you like the looks of the NB better or vice versa, then you can mix and match. It doesn't matter. You go with whatever one that you like the looks of better or is cheaper and fits your budget. Number 10 is the Toyota Cressida, and it comes with a 3 liter inline 6 that makes 190 horsepower. And you may be asking yourself, well, since the last car had the exact same engine size, but with more power and lighter weight, then why did he put this car higher than it? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the Miata, by the way, I'm actually talking about the freaking um, uh, BMW Z3. I don't know why I just drew a blank there, but I'm talking about the BMW Z3. So you may be asking yourself, why did I put it higher than the Z3 since the Z3 has more power and it's the same engine size? 
Well, because I think the car looks cool, okay? It's my list. And the Cressida, it just has that like old sedan styling to it that you're gonna like see old man Jenkins cruising to the Krusty Krab in. And I love those like unassuming little sedans. I think they look so cool, especially when they're pimped out to be something really nuts and you're just not expecting it. And that's exactly what the Cressida is good for. Number nine is the Ford Crown Victoria, and it comes with a 4.6 liter V8 that makes 239 horsepower, and many people call this car the cheapest way to get the most power. And while that is pretty true, I, I don't agree with it 100%. I do agree with it a lot, just not 100%. Reason being, the next like generation police cars are here, and so the police are auctioning off all their like old Crown Vics for absolutely dirt cheap, and the Interceptor package on the Crown Vic makes them even faster, and the Intercept Interceptor package is obviously the one that the police got but if you would rather have a normal crown vic for the obvious reasons of just staying out of trouble then it still is a pretty quick little car it's just in my opinion i don't think it's the best bang for your buck car out there like everybody else says i think there's a lot of better cars and you're obviously going to see that in this video i have eight more to go Number eight actually comes from the same family. It's the Ford Mustang GT SN95, and it comes with a 4.6 liter V8 that makes only 215 horsepower compared to the 239 the Crown Vic makes. And to be honest, the SN95 looked mediocre to say the least. So it's not my personal favorite, but, but some people absolutely love them. These cars, unlike the Fox body, aren't the best in a straight line, but that's okay. They still do fine. It's just that they were built as more of a sports car than a muscle car. So now instead of being able to only go fast in a straight line, like most Mustangs can, boom, shots fired, baby. It can also go fast around corners too. And I love that. I absolutely love that about the SN95 and New Edge Mustangs is that, that yes, they are still a muscle car at heart. They still have that roaring V8 in them, but they can do sports car things. That's sick. Every muscle car before them was a strictly straight line speed muscle car. And these cars was like, yeah, what's up, baby? Oh, and they can drift, which is just kind of hilarious. Number seven is the Lexus GS300, and it comes with a three liter inline six that makes 225 horsepower, but the car didn't come in a manual transmission, which makes me sad, obviously, but a manual swap on these cars isn't actually that hard since so many of the other chassis that came with the same engine and platform have bolt-ons that can bolt right onto the GS300 and make it into a manual transmission. It's pretty much a plug and play kind of deal. Keep in mind though, while these cars do look really cool, at least in my opinion, they are the worst performance-wise out of the Lexus 2JZ trio. And yes, you heard me right. These cars have a naturally aspirated 2JZ in them, but don't get your hopes up because the 2JZ in this puppy can only handle around 600 horsepower before you have to start touching internals, which is fine. 600 horsepower is still enough, but it's obviously not as good as a GTE. Number six is another Lexus, the Lexus LS400. Two of these puppies back to back. And this one actually came with a four liter V8 that makes 270 horsepower. So obviously, yes, it's better than the GS300. But the downside is this car was used way more for the luxury side of things, meaning that the car handles more like a grandma's car than anything else. Like the GS300 had a little bit of sportiness about it. This car just didn't. It was just like, yeah, you know what? The grandmas need something. We're here to save the day. And they gave them an LS400. Also keep in mind that most Lexuses, this one included, didn't come in a manual transmission. And the ones, the Lexuses that did come in a tran manual transmission are going for like $5 million now because everybody thinks they have something special, which they do. But why do they have to know that? Like, why can't you just act like it's not special? Because it's so annoying, Lexus owners. Give me an SC300 for $500 and I will, I will, I will do whatever you want. Number five is the Chevy Corvette C4. Uh oh, that's a, that's an explosive in Call of Duty. And it comes with a 5.7 liter V8 that makes 300 horsepower. And it was so hated for absolutely no reason. Like I understand the C4 doesn't look the best out of the Corvette line, but it still looks pretty damn good. So I don't know why people hate on it so much. Like it just, it just it's a cool looking car. Anyways, these cars are, to be honest, not really the best at any like one thing. Like sure, they can drag race. Yes, they can track day it up. And surprisingly, they can actually drift too, but it does all of those three things pretty boring. Where these cars really shine, it's just the driving experience of a Corvette. You get that raw feeling. It's just like a, you just get to feel the Corvette in the ground beneath you. Every worm that you run over, it's like, ah, and you can hear it. It's just like every, the driving experience, is surreal in a Corvette. 
Number four is a bit of an oddball. It's the BMW 540i E34, and it comes with a four liter V8 that makes 282 horsepower, which is massive, yes. But that's not the reason that I put the car so high. I put the car so gosh darn high because the car is, to be honest, just so pretty. Man, like these old BMWs, it just works so well. I love them. And the fact that this one had a German V8 in it just makes me an even happier. Like I'm, I'm gonna go on the roof tonight and just scream to the world how happy I am because of this car's existence, which I didn't think was possible. Once again, Russians tend to love these cars. They find a way to drift these things all the time. So if you wanna drift, but wanna be unique, it's definitely possible. And you don't have to worry about wasting your money because they're dirt cheap. Third place is the Lexus SC400 and it comes with a four liter V8 that makes 270 horsepower. And yes, that is the exact same engine that's found in the LS400 that we just went over. But this one, this car has a bit more of a little race car side to it. It's got a little bit of a naughty side. It's a little bad boy, you know, hanging out outside of like the jaywalking outside of mcdonald's and stuff is like what the sc400 does and then honestly it does bring the car a long way like the ls400 was made specifically for grandmas but us car guys nowadays like to lower them to the ground and just scrape on every pebble known to man the sc however was built to be a fun cruiser while still being able to be enjoyed by grandmas and us car guys now like to drift them and still slam them on the ground and i even know somebody who has a 1000 horsepower one in the town that i live in it's absolutely nuts and before you say it yes you can buy an sc300 for under 5k too but it's going to be automatic and at that point you should just buy the sc400 number two second place it's the bmw 330ci e46 and it comes with a three liter inline six that makes 235 horsepower and they were actually available in all-wheel drive too so if you'd rather have that actually i don't know why i just now thought of this but a lot of these cars on the list are available in all-wheel drive Anyways, the car is by no means the fastest car on this list, but the engine does have some have some potential, not the most potential on this list, but some. So you may be asking yourself, well, Mark, this car just sounds kind of basic compared to the rest of the list. Why'd you put it number two? Well, the main reason that I put it number two is because I think this car is easily the best car to buy if you want to get started drifting. They are so dirt cheap for what they are right now. They love, and I mean love, okay they like want to get married to drifting and you're not going to lose money on it as well since they have that old bmw style to them that will be popular within a couple years they also have a massive community around them so that's nice but the only car that i think is better than it and yes this is a biased answer but i don't care it's the infinity g35 coupe and it comes with the good old 3.5 liter v6 that makes 306 horsepower and they just look absolutely cool are they the best car out there for under five thousand dollars probably not but that's only because of the impracticality of them. Everything else is amazing on them. And if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're probably a little bit of a car enthusiast. And so you probably don't really care about the daily driving factors of the car and have, being comfortable. So that's why I put it first. I mean, they have an abs and huge aftermarket support that you can build a car on any budget with. Like they have freaking coilovers for like 10 bucks. You can go down the street. There's gonna be a guy handing out coilovers for a G35 on the side of the road. They also have a huge community that's going to help you out when you need it. They're pretty much a pocket 350 Z, so speed is not an issue and they look sick which is something that every car guy loves obviously and despite what anybody says the bq35 is actually a very reliable good tuner engine to build on especially if this is going to be your first car but that is the end of this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did you already know what to do baby like comment and subscribe for more content. Also, go check out the website if you want to support the channel, www.smoothstance.com slash shop. I appreciate everybody that bought something, by the way. You guys mean the world to me. I can't believe how many people bought something like so fast. It's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. So thank you guys so much. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed, let me know another video you guys want to see because I really need some ideas and any ideas that you guys give me, I'll do them. Next is going to be motorcycles just because somebody requested it. So we'll do motorcycles next. I'll do requests first. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. That's with Daniel. And have a nice night.